Well, this is basically the first exam objective. A long one. Okay, let's go for the next topics. The next topic is this one, secure virtualize, uh, virtualization infrastructure. The first topic here, exam topic, it's guarded fabric solution. Implement a, a guarded fabric solution. So, information about how to use, uh, how to use this role, how to, pro uh, to, to implement it. What is about guardian, guarded fabric? So, it's based on the in virtualization uh, infrastructure. And you are installing on the machine, uh, you are installing uh, first the host guardian service. Actually, it's recommended to, to install basically a cluster of three nodes to build a host guardian savior, uh, service, safe harbor forest. Yeah? Um, actually, it's about a new Active Directory forest that you are going to install. And if you're installing this role on a dedicated machine, that could be a standalone machine. And this is installing on the machine. Uh, it will be the first machine in the, the HGS cluster. And you are installing, it's installing Active Directory service, it's installing clustering, it's installing um, Internet Information Services, BitLocker Drive Encryption, it's installing everything, just installing the, the role. And it's configuring this, this cluster. After that, you have to consider, you have to, to implement a one-way external trust between the isolated host uh, guardian service Safe Harbor Forest and the production forest. Yeah. This is mandatory to, to use. And we are using two attestation modes, TPM trusted attestation or admin trusted attestation. So you know the issue that Guarded Fabric is solving. It's basically protecting the virtual environment from malicious admins and as well machines to be exported or just copied from a data center and started on another host machine which is not trusted. Yeah. In a such scenario, for example, we do have some yeah, more explanation in the next uh, in the next slides. So if a user we have actually two kinds of administrators. One is the fabric administrator, I mean the environment of the the, the environment of the, the virtualization environment, and another one it's a workload administrator, which is the normal admin of virtual machines doing all the stuff, administration stuff. It should have access to the machine. So uh, basically, the fabric admin should be able to access machines, but not to, to access content. Should be, a, for example, in a typical scenario, um, fabric administrator in a Hyper-V environment should be able just to start the machine, maybe but not having any access to the content of the machine. Maybe we don't trust this guy, especially in the, in the cloud environment when you have multiple tenants. You don't want, for example, the Hyper-V administrator to have access to the machines. You know, we have a new feature like PowerShell Direct. And this PowerShell Direct feature maybe is not something you should see in a such protected environment. You don't want to, to let the local ad, the admin of the virtual environment to have access to the protected, to, to have access to the machines, to the content, and so to manage everything there, here. And we have two different um, uh, uh, scenarios. I mean, for example, when you're installing Guardian host role, yeah, here is our, our cluster. First of all, the machine is checking the first process is attestation. Should this machine be started, virtual machine, be started on a particular virtual, virtual host? I mean, oh, sorry, virtual host, on, on a particular host. Yeah? And you are limiting, actually, the machines. That machine, it, it will be checked. Attestation is checking if the machine must be started on a particular host. If that machine it was copied, for example, stolen from somewhere, and somebody is starting to install this machine here and to make it running, doesn't work. And the attestation, it's, uh, the, this process of attestation, it's using two different options. One, it's based on just admin. I mean, for example, 
the, 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 the machine you are starting, the virtual machine you are trying to start, must be in a dedicated uh, group in active, in active Directory. Or this is admin attestation, and another one is based on the TPM. So it's checking the hardware. I mean, a particular virtual machine, it's running only on a particular host, and the binding it's created using the TPM information. You are trying to launch that machine on another host, doesn't work. Yeah? Okay, this is the attestation process. The second process is should somebody be able to access this machine for administration purpose? I mean, to work on that machine, on the virtual machine? able to, to, to access the content on that machine. And this is another process about, about we're calling this, we're calling this KPS. It's provided by, by this uh, key protection service. Even if you are, maybe you, you are able to start that machine, but you don't have access to the content on the machine in any way. You should not access the content there. Yeah, and this is this is this feature. It's it's provided by this key protection service. Yeah, that enables Hyper-V to run shielded machine or protected machine because shielded is just an just an option here. Well, this is uh, the idea of the key protection service. So it's just after attestation. If the attestation succeeds, key protection service it's decided whether to release a key to start a VM. And this may be available to, and the machine to be, to be available to uh, the workload admin, for example, yeah? It's using a certificate system, yeah? You need some certificates, you need some PKI implementation. Okay, it's working even using some uh, self-signed certificates, but it's not highly recommended. Well, we have here um, the procedure which is uh, requested some, yeah, um, you should be familiar with some information about how to troubleshoot uh, guarded hosts in a, in a host um, guardian uh, environment. Yeah, there are some, okay, some information. You, we will have some dedicated PowerShell scripts uh, for this. You should be able to, to access a particular link on, uh, on the, the, the TPS server, on a HDS server providing, um, uh, providing this, uh, this feature. So the next topic in, uh, related to this is shielded or encryption supported virtual machines. So this is just a part, uh, attestation and key providing service. I mean, the machine should run on a particular host and the second part is that one who, ab who is able to access the content on a virtual machine if the machine is started. Yeah. And we have three scenarios here. Yeah, because uh, you can run in a guarded fabric environment, you can run basically a normal machine, not protected, not encrypted. There is no encryption between, there is no protection of access between the host machine and the virtual machine, right? It's, which is a normal environment, yeah, in most of situations. But we have two additional features, encryption supported virtual machine and another one it's shielded VM. Yeah, what's the difference? Because, for example, encryption supported, uh, encryption supported feature, you could see even in VMware or different providers of virtualization. But this one, uh, shielded VM, it's just at Microsoft available. Yeah. Uh, what is about, so you need in order to, in order to, to set up, you need, uh, for example, for a shielded VM, you need basic disk, GUID partition table, you need two partitions, you need NTFS. Uh, by the way, if we're talking about a shielded VM, there is no way to have access from the Hyper-V management console to that machine. All options are grayed out. You cannot start the machine, you cannot reconfigure the machine, everything is grayed out. Only a fabric, you, as a virtualization administration, you have no access to any feature in that machine. You cannot configure, you can only, 
uh, only a person, workload administrator, could connect you basically using remote desktop protocol to have access to that machine. There is no way to have access, local access to that machine. So uh, features like PowerShell Direct, so not working anymore, by the way. Yeah? So most of features, most of features are not working. If there is generation, if it's just encryption supported, okay, you could configure, still configure some features, like secure boot, virtual TPM. Uh, some features are configurable, yeah? You, the fabric admin, you, the, the, yeah, the fabric admin, I mean, you have some access to the machines. You can configure. As a virtualization administrator, you still have access to some options to configure in the, in the, the encrypted, uh, encrypted machine. But still, there is encryption. Yeah. The machine is encrypted to you. You don't have access to, to most of the features there. So it sounds very comfortable in an in a, um, environment. Especially the, the second scenario, that a shielded VM sounds very comfortable if you don't trust too much the virtualization administrator. Yeah, that's the basic scenario we're, we're covering. Yeah, because it's happening. Yeah, for example, you have a large, you have a large, uh, you have a large data center, and you're hosting virtual machines. Uh, yeah, multiple tenants there, and yeah, it should be a definite in isolation. So basically, in a shielded VM, a local virtualization administrator has no access to any feature in, in, in Hyper-V, yeah. Okay, so, good. Next topic, troubleshooting shielded and encryption supported VM. We have some specific topics, yeah, how to check for, how to check for, how to, to, to make some diagnostic, and uh, there are some, some failures in the implementation of, uh, uh, host guard service and so we have some tools in in PowerShell yeah you can use in order to check the status to to access some reports and so on okay just a practice question right now okay you are planning to to deploy guarded host So it's not so complicated to answer to. Yeah, some ideas? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Congratulations. Yeah. You have first to disjoin from the domain because you are preparing to install an Active Directory Forest separately. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. This is the first 